Hello students, here we are at the start of week four and I'm using a different technique this time. I have a video camera set up about two feet away from this monitor and I'm going to scroll through the pages in the Canvas page and talk about them uh, and what this should do is serve as a way that you might consider using to share your thoughts on your visual autobiographies. So on the agenda, we've got, uh, first off, was there any visual communication in the news? And it turns out there are two pieces. Um, the first one was uh, on the front page of the business day section. And it says, facial recognition works best if you're a white guy. And this is a news story about the fact that facial recognition is pretty accurate for identifying the gender of white males. And it becomes less accurate if uh, you're trying to identify um, lighter skinned females. It becomes even less accurate if you are trying to identify the gender of darker skinned males. And when you get then to darker skinned females, it's, it's rather inaccurate. And this relates to a news story from last June, and it was, uh, it was called the white guy problem in AI, or artificial intelligence. And so what researchers are finding out is that the algorithms that are built into artificial intelligence sometimes have embedded in them the same uh, racial and gender, gender stereotypes that are found among some of the programmers. And the programmers are largely white males. So uh, that becomes an issue then in terms of the um, technologies that we have available to, uh, to use you say, well, it's just a tool, it's just a technology. Um, it can have biases built into it, and we're finding out um, this is a second instance where it's apparent that there is a bias built into some of these technologies. The other piece of visual communication in the news is a special report in today's New York Times, and it's called Into the Eye of the Internet. And so I have a link to the electronic version of this in Canvas in visual communication in the news. And there are four, no, there are actually eight stories. The stories uh, have to do with the future, addiction, memes, Instagram, Me Too, Twitter, alt-right, and brands. And a kind of consistent theme across these stories is how important visuals are. So one of the things that's happening is that words are losing their power and images are sort of claiming that power. And so that's uh, important and relevant. So the results of quiz number two on design and layout chapter. So uh, you took the quiz and some of you said, oh, you know, look at that, I was almost right and they, you know, I lost the point for a spelling error. So that's just what the machine did. I went back in and moderated the quiz and gave you the points that you should have gotten if all it was was a typo or a spelling error or uh, singular instead of plural or two words instead of one word. So that's all taken care of. Uh, presentation of your visual autobiographies. So again, uh, I have created that uh, discussion board space and I'm hoping that you will avail yourself of one of the different ways that you might um, share it with us because now I've seen your visual autobiographies but your classmates haven't. So it's an opportunity for you to show them to your classmates but then also tell uh, why you made the decisions you made. Um, I'm going to discuss picture this, how pictures work. That was that 35 slide uh, representation of a book by Molly Bang. And then uh, um, I will discuss McLuhan Fiore messaging the message. I don't think I'm going to do that um, this evening. I will probably do that tomorrow evening. And then we're going to uh, assign visual design project number two. So um, here is visual design project number two. So if you go to this page, one of the things that you're going to see is you're going to see a photograph that is on top and a photograph beneath it. And the one beneath it uh, is different because there's a person missing. And so the caption says, now you see him, now you don't. The person on the far right in the original photo is Nikolai Yezov, who had been water commissar until he fell from power, was arrested and was shot. After that, his image was airbrushed out of the official picture of Stalin and two other officials. So this is one of the ways that 
images have been manipulated over time is to airbrush people out. So this was before the days of Photoshop, but uh, as you can see, they did a pretty convincing job of getting rid of Nikolai Yetzov. So then sort of the historical record no longer has to be sort of confronted with the problem that somebody who was once a close ally of Stalin uh, is now dead. Well, just get him out of the pictures and maybe try and get rid of any versions of the pictures in which he had originally appeared. And so then here we have Governor Tom Corbett of Pennsylvania appealed to a diverse constituency. And so that's an actual image screen grab from when Governor Tom Corbett, he was a one-term governor of Pennsylvania, was running for re-election. And if you look uh, to, to the left of his image, it would be on his right, you see this African-American woman who's smiling and she looks like saying, oh, this is a good guy, I can kind of dig this guy. And if you look at it, you will notice that that image there is this image here and it's just been reversed and the color of the blouse has been changed. But basically, there was no African-American woman in the crowd of people listening intently to Governor Mike Corbett. Uh, basically, they put someone in from, from uh, central casting. And so adding an African-American woman to the audience listening to Governor Corbett was strategic given that the unpopular one-term governor was least popular among women and minorities. So that's another way in which people have manipulated images uh, for some strategic reason. And here we see two images of Wisconsin. Everyone loves Wisconsin basketball. And the one on the left with the Wisconsin logo on the top is actually the cover of their catalog. And this would have been for 2012, I think. Um, no, this is 2001, 2002. Uh, but if you look, there is an African-American fan over here on the left-hand side. Well, it turns out he's not there in the original photograph. He was added in, and then the question is, why would they add him in? And an image of an African-American male was added to the cover of the University of Wisconsin catalog, so prospective students wouldn't think that the student population was all white, right? Now, um, we all know that uh, Ronald Reagan was quite the horseman. And so there's a picture of former President Ronald Reagan, and he's got a cowboy hat, and he's got a great looking horse, and he's got a blue jean jacket, and he's got a blue jeans on, and he's got a nice western buckle. But it turns out that uh, Ronald actually rode English saddle until his handlers told him not to. The reason being that this would have been considered sort of an, an elitist approach to horseback riding, and uh, he wasn't gonna win the hearts and minds of some people in the heartland of the country if they see his relationship to uh, horseback riding as something uh, coming more from the British elite rather than the American cowboy. And now, even though um, I have been, uh, I was a regular viewer of Dancing with the Stars, I never did actually see this image, which uh, shows uh, Barack Obama uh, dancing with the former governor of uh, Alaska, Sarah Palin. And so um, that's humorous, uh, and uh, it's actually pretty convincing if you look at it. Um, the, although the head of Sarah Palin looks a little large for her body, and um, the lighting on Barack Obama's face might not quite match the shirt, but that's a, that's a pretty darn uh, good job of bringing those things together. Finally, some have used Photoshop not to trick the viewer into believing in something that never happened, but to invite the viewer to review something that did. And so then this is a picture. Some of you may recognize what the original was. The original was uh, Lee Harvey Oswald uh, being shot by Jack Ruby. But uh, in this case, the artist is, uh, it's the late George Malberg. Uh, the name of this picture is called Inagata de Oswald. It was created in 1996 by George Malberg. Uh, he was also known as Dr. Cosmo. He was a DJ on WPRB radio in Princeton. He quickly altered the archival photo of Jack Ruby, assassinating Lee Harvey Oswald substituting an electric guitar for Ruby's gun, adding a Roland organ, and putting a cryptic symbol on the back wall. And so uh, aficionados of late 70s punk music might recognize that symbol as representing the band The Dead Kennedys. So that's this, this DK up here is the Dead Kennedy symbol. And so that was just another part of this joke that was uh, sort of included in sort of a, a macabre joke created by the late George Malberg. All right, so what are you going to do? 
your visual design project number two. Your assignment is to create a believable, yet impossible, aspirational image of yourself. In other words, there can't really be a photograph of you receiving a Nobel Prize. However, if that is something you aspire to, then using Photoshop or some other image manipulation software, create a credible image of yourself receiving that prize. Each of you will produce your own image, but you may elect to work in pairs in the event that someone with little or no digital image manipulation experience might receive hands-on guidance from someone with Photoshop expertise. Conversely, you can make an appointment to work with me during a mutually convenient period to produce a believable image. So uh, not last time, but the time before that, I worked with a woman had no Photoshop experience whatsoever, had no, um, you know, did not have much uh, computer experience and probably working with her hands-on for a couple hours, we were able to uh, fulfill this assignment in a way that was quite convincing. Basically, she created an image of herself uh, with her boss and so uh, it was. It looked. It looked quite real. So she did a good job on that. So um, um, I'm going to show you one that I did, and I will find the instructional video that I followed to make the one that I did, uh, which is is pretty easy to follow. So the image below is one that I created in less than an hour by following a five-step process laid out in a YouTube video about combining two images in Photoshop. I had used Photoshop before, but it had been a while. While this is not a great fulfillment of the assignment because I never really aspired to be president of the United States, it does fulfill the impossible requirement. So here you then have President Tim McGee. So um, I no longer wear the uh, mustache and beard that's in that picture, but uh, you know people who know me recognize my face, and then people who have seen pictures of President Obama recognize that's President Obama, and you have the background, etc. So. Um, uh, so I, it does fulfill the impossible requirement and I'll let you decide on the believability question. At that time I did sport the facial hair that appears in the image. As for the aspirational part, think back to the portion of the nature and power of images and what the author said about the importance of vision statements to corporations. More about that on the next page. So here's where we get to that aspirational request. Your assigned visual design project two that included the idea that the impossible image you construct be aspirational. The motivation behind that requirement relates to the portion of the nature and power of images chapter that discussed mental imagery, especially pages 90 to 92. The author asserts that the understanding of the power of visualization gained wide popular acceptance in the 1950s and that most significant areas of impact, however, have been in business strategies, sports, and medicine. Supporting her claim with examples from business with a strong vision and research done on athletic performance and the recovery of medical patients, the author concludes, at the core of it all is the simple realization that the visual image may be the most powerful tool that human beings have to direct the course of their own and others' lives. So that is why I'm requiring that the image in your impossible photograph be aspirational, so you can potentially benefit from the power of positive imaging. Okay, so that's what we've got uh, on the agenda for this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to conclude this video, uh, save it, post it, put it in Canvas, and then I'm going to start the next one in which I'm going to go through several of those slides in uh, Picture That, How Pictures Work by Molly Bang, and talk about how what she's doing is actually demonstrating the principles of Gestalt psychology. So uh, signing off for now, uh, and in a couple minutes, this will be up in the Canvas site, and then I will be producing the next short video uh, talking about the Molly Bang images.